everyone, it's Lisa here. I'm so glad you're here to join me for a quick walkthrough of my latest brushes called the Nitty Gritty Brush Box. We'll also be doing some warm-up exercises to help you get the most out of the brushes and see how easy it is to add yummy texture to your work. So I designed this set to include brushes for each phase in the creating process, which includes sketching brushes, filling brushes, texture brushes, stamps and a whole lot more. The brushes are carefully grouped and designed to build on each other. You'll have full control over how much texture you'd like to add to your work, but I do encourage you to really let loose with these brushes and embrace messy and loose results, which I think really adds a lovely quirkiness to an art piece, especially when it comes to drawing cute little characters. Starting at the top, the set includes a variety of sketching brushes, each with their own unique texture. I've also thrown in my pencil brush called Lisa's Pencil, which comes from another set as a bonus. Next are yummy filler brushes that work really well standalone, or layer them to get some really quirky results. Moving on to the texture brushes, you'll find a variety of interesting textures which also work really well when used as clipping masks. My favourite is the shy canvas which I use a lot on the edges with my line work to create interesting effects. Then we have some fun background brushes which are large brushes I designed to help you fill big areas quickly but still create texture as you work. Next are the shaders. These work really well using a clipping mask and include a variety of grain depending on the look you're going for. As you may know by now, I love including handcrafted stamps in my brush sets. These include both build-up stamps and organic texture stamps. The build-up brushes are designed to build the texture up with each stamp depending on the results that you want. They work really well when used as a clipping mask. The texture stamps are great for quirky details in your drawings. And finally, we have some fun handcrafted seamless patterns. The scale of each pattern is super easy to adjust to your specific needs. You can also change the direction of the pattern as well. To do that, simply tap on the brush to open the brush studio. Navigate to the grain tab and adjust the scale slider to change the scale of the pattern. To change the direction of the pattern, tap on edit, use two fingers to rotate, tap done, then done again. Now you have a bespoke size ready for your artwork. Now that you have an idea of the brushes included, let's do a quick warm up exercise to get familiar with them. You'll see how easy it is to add texture to your work and how layering the brushes can give you yummy results. I'll walk you through my workflow and how I use the brush system to get quick results. You may have a different process of course, or a technique when you draw, but I'm hoping by showing you my workflow, it'll give you some tips on how you can use the brushes in your work regardless of your process. I've gone ahead and created a document that is 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is make sure that you've imported the free palette that comes with the collection. This one is the Nitty Gritty Warm Up and we're just going to start using some of the colors and the brushes just that you can get a feel for the set and how you can use it in your work. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just sketch out a simple shape. So we're not going for anything fancy today. What I want to do is just um, create a very simple shape that will kind of look like a bunny. Um, I don't want you to get stuck on actually drawing. I rather want you to focus on what the brushes can do. Okay, so we on a, on a new layer, we're just simply going to sketch out kind of like a, a teardroppy type shape. And 
and because it's sort of a bunny we're just going to add some ears and I've used the light sketcher which is a really great uh, sketching brush for some um, foundation lines and you can decide if you want to keep the foundation lines in your final piece I tend to often do that it just adds uh, even more kind of grunginess to it so I'm including just a very sweet little simple uh, face to the bunny okay on a new layer I'm gonna come and use my grimy shy pencil so this is very uh, sensitive to pressure in terms of how much grunge you want you can decide how rough you want to go I quite like the that sort of grungy effect you might want to um, you know do use less in your work it's entirely up to you And I'm just going to come down and use Lisa's pencil just to create more definitive line work on the face. And then I'm going to set that to multiply. So I'm creating a new layer, but I'm going to move it right to the bottom of everything. And I'm going to start applying my color. So I'm going to choose this mustard is very sort of uh, ochre dark mustard color coming down to my filler brushes I'm going to choose the canvas grunge and you'll see I'm not being too particular about keeping within the lines because I actually want a messy effect and this is where I encourage you to really let loose with your uh, brush strokes I don't want you to get hung up on being perfect. This brush set is designed for that sort of grungy, messy look. Okay, so now we're going to apply another color on top of that. So this creates more richness in your final piece. And I'm going to choose the lighter color. It's kind of a cream color. And the brush I'll be using is called Cosmos. So with this brush, the more you push down on the brush, the more um, texture you'll get. So you can decide how much you want to uh, show through of the background. Well, uh, of the underneath color, should I say. <laughs> okay, so as we're going to the edges, we are just being kind of neater. But you'll see I'm leaving a little bit of the underneath color peeping through. And we're going for imperfection. That's the idea. And then I'm just going to come over to my smeary grain brush and this brush uh, works really well with kind of stroke action. So the more brush strokes you, you use, the more you'll see the texture of the brush. And I'm just doing it here and there, but I'm still leaving a lot of the sort of underneath texture coming through. Okay, so I'm going to set my original sketch, my light sketch uh, layer to color burn. And I just like that effect. You'll see what's happened here. It just basically picks up the underneath color and kind of like mushes with that layer, which is what I like. Okay, so now we're going to add some uh, texture using the texture brushes. So on a new layer, I'm going to set that to a clipping mask and I'm also going to set it to linear burn. I'm going to see what happens um, with that and we can always change it if we don't like. 
So coming down to one of my texture brushes, I'm going to use dry streaks and I'm just very lightly controlling that texture with different pressure on my Apple Pencil. And that's already added quite a nice um, additional dimension to the drawing. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add some highlights. So setting that layer to add and also a clipping mask, I'm going to use the light color and see what happens and probably something like the moonwalking. There we go. And of course you can decide how much you want. We're going to just bring that opacity down a dash. But this at least gives you an idea of how those texture brushes can you be used both for highlights and for shadow work. Okay, so we're going to now add a quirky little stamp. So adding a new layer. Coming down to my texture stamps, I'm going to go with the three stripes and just choose the sort of pinky color. I'll stamp once and see what happens. It's probably about the right size. Just bring it down a dash. So you can decide how you want to deal with the uh, textures. You can either you know, use them as clipping masks or have them kind of bleeding over the, the drawing. Depends on the look you're going for. Um, but I'm actually going to set that to multiply. Because again, I want to kind of fuse everything together. And multiply tends to do that. And then just add some cute little cheeks for this guy using a lighter pink color, the painted circle, and that's too big. That's about right. And again, set that to multiply. And then on my, uh, the same layer as my like, grungy pencil work that I used, I'm going to come over to the shy canvas which is one of the texture brushes and I'm just gonna add a little bit of detail here and there and this kind of just gives it that additional sort of grunginess and scruffiness which is what we're going for and now I'm, I'm using the dust brush and just doing the same thing just here and there. Okay, so we want to add some shadow and there's so many ways you can do that. And of course you can use any of the brushes. You can use the shader brush to do that. Um, you know, you can use any of even the texture brushes. I quite like using the canvas grunge for shadow. So I'm going to set that to multiply and I'm just going to choose this sort of gray color, warm gray color. And if my light source is coming from this direction, so all the shadow is going to be on this side. And this is just a very loose interpretation. We're not going to get too bogged down with that. And Again, you can decide if you want to, you know, have it quite a harsh shadow or more subtle. And I'm just going to raise that area a bit, but I'm going to use the light grain because I want to keep that texture and just remove some of it. So finally, I want to add a cute little pattern in the ears. So creating a new layer. I'm going to set that to screen because I want it to be quite uh, bright. And I'm going to use the Dilly Dotty pattern. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cute. And maybe finally, 
using the same color as our line work. I'm just going to use Lisa's pencil to add some whiskers. And there we have a cute little character where we used uh, most of the brushes, just so you can get an idea of how quickly you can add texture to your drawings. I hope you found that helpful. And in the next video, we're going to be drawing a cute bear. So join me there.